What's up everybody and welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. Today we have our final packages for our giveaway winners to get in the mail. Finally got boxes and everything so we can get them nicely packaged up so they'll make it there in one piece. So we are headed over to the post office to deliver those. All the packages for the giveaway are sent out i can't wait to do the next one so keep hitting that subscribe button and we will get to the next giveaway as soon as possible so now that we're getting into winter i was going to get into more of like the winter project stuff and i was going to bring the mini bike over to westies because we're actually going to be custom fabbing a new exhaust system for that and we're kind of going to go a little bit more of a kind of harley look bagger look to the bike and just kind of seeing what the bike tells us when we're looking at it as far as design wise and, and what we're gonna do with it. So I was gonna put that in the back of my wife's truck and bring it over there and we're gonna do that, but I had to bring the Denali in today so they could look at it <clears throat> and get this warranty ball rolling. So apparently we're not gonna be working on the bike today. But we are going over to Westies and we're gonna talk about tools. Now, a lot of times when you work in a mechanic shop, like this is kind of geared towards mechanics or like maybe guys just starting out. A lot of the mechanics that you work with, they're gonna be older guys maybe and have a bunch of Snap-on and Mac and you know name brand stuff off the tool truck. And that can be a little bit intimidating. Like if you're a new apprentice or, or mechanic, I mean in Canada we have apprenticeships and whatever. Like I started my apprenticeship when I was 15 years old and I had no money at all to buy Snap-on tools. I mean a $50 socket just blew my mind. There's, there's just no way that was gonna happen, never mind buying an entire set. So. Westy and I are gonna kind of lay out what tools a new mechanic should buy from the Snap-on truck and what stuff maybe you could wait or buy a cheaper tool to kind of give yourself a good set of tools to be able to make money in order to afford the more expensive stuff later on. There's an accident on 322. Where at? I don't know, it just set it on my car. Hmm. I didn't know it did that until it did it. <laughs> I pulled on to 322 and it says, caution, accident on 322. I'm like, oh, right on. Didn't know it did that. All right, now talking about tools a little bit. When you first started a shop, you probably, you know, you're not ready to buy all the Snap-on tools and all that kind of stuff, I mean, although you can. But sometimes maybe the guy's not 100% sure that this is something that he's gonna do for a living or maybe just doesn't have enough money to go ahead and make a huge snap-on payment every month. But as you can see, Westy is a big snap-on guy. He's been doing this for a very long time. He's had a lot of time to build up a good collection of tools. He's got everything in full sets for snap-on stuff and all the screwdrivers and all the torques and all that kind of stuff. There's so much stuff you can possibly buy. Like even all his extensions are snap-on. All that stuff adds up to a lot of money. So if you're gonna be doing this and you're just starting out, there's a few things I just kinda of wanted to list for everybody of things that you should buy Snap-on and maybe some of the other things might wanna wait. The first thing that I would buy and the first thing that I did buy when I was like 16 years old, I just started in the trade, I bought a set of Snap-on pry bars. Pry bars are definitely something that you wanna buy a good set of and I'm still using the ones that I bought then today. They're not a whole lot of money. They're probably around $200, something like that. They go on sale sometimes and then you get a free ratchet or a free big pry bar sometimes. So watch out for sales. A lot of times Snap-on will have things go on sale and then that's probably the best time to buy those. Another thing I wanted to say too is sockets. You wanna have a good set of sockets but you don't necessarily need every size. So now depending on where you work, I just wanted to show for an example here. I bought this socket today. This socket was almost $60 for one. And this is a 21 millimeter, it's a pretty common chassis size. 
it's in a wobble so it's a little bit more money and uh, you a lot of times use those when you're doing front end work and things like that and they do take a beating so to get a good one is probably a good idea because if you're in the middle of a job and you break a socket well you're probably not going to be able to get another one right away and you know time crunch times money you want to have a good one 21 mil is a pretty common size and if you're doing something regularly and you're using that socket a lot like 10 millimeter 15 millimeter depending where you work buy the sockets that you use every day the good ones another thing i would buy a quality tool of is screwdrivers because definitely the tips on these are going to grip way better than any of the cheap ones you're not going to break them nearly as easily and also lifetime warranty and you can get into a set of screwdrivers for probably under $200 and you're probably going to use them for the rest of your entire career. Because one thing you're going to notice when you use a snap-on tool is you're probably not going to be stripping things out nearly as often and that saves you time, it makes you a faster tech, keeps you in the good graces of your management who want to get the jobs out the door and have a quality job done. So the quality tools definitely help you do that without running into too many unnecessary problems. Another thing I would recommend if you do a lot of drilling definitely get a good set of drill bits. I mean, these are snap-on. I have a max set, they're cobalt, they're lifetime warranty. If you ever break one, the truck will replace it. And as long as you keep lubrication on them, they will cut through pretty much anything. And I've had really good luck with those. It's really sped up a lot of my job times. Rather than buying cheap bits and burning them out and throwing them away all the time, get one good set, last you a very long time. Now, as far as air tools go, when I first started out, I bought a used trade-in half-inch impact because I worked in a Chevy dealership. Half-inch is what we use a lot for wheels and things like that, chassis parts, and that's basically your go-to impact. I bought a Blue Point one used off the truck for probably about $100. It was probably retailed for around four or five. So it was in good condition, and eventually I just traded it in when I bought a new one. But as far as the snap-on dealer goes, I mean, you're always gonna get something for that tool later on, as long as it still works. So, I mean, to buy a used tool, and if you can't afford the new one, it's still a pretty good option. Another thing I wanted to talk about, and these weren't really a thing when I first started, but electric tools have come a long way. I mean, Westy has the snap-on ones. They're a really good product. I'm not entirely sure who makes these. I think snap-on themselves makes their own electric tools. But for me, I didn't want to spend the extra money because I know snap-on batteries are pretty hard to come by if you wanted to get other ones and you don't have access to a snap-on truck. So what I did is I bought the Milwaukee set and I beat those things within an inch of their life. They last for a long time. You can buy batteries anywhere pretty well online. You can buy batteries at Lowe's. You can buy replacement tools at Lowe's and pretty much if you stick with the same brand, all your batteries are interchangeable and you can get them for a pretty decent price. So as far as specialty tools go, I mean, you're gonna run into different things for different people. I mean, if you went on the Snap-on truck and bought absolutely everything on that truck, not everybody's actually gonna be able to make money back on every tool because your job may not require you to have every single thing. So you kinda gotta tailor your toolbox to the places that you work and the jobs that you encounter and buy the quality tools that are gonna make you as fast and efficient without spending all your money on the snap-on truck and not making anything. So everybody's gotta kind of decide what they need and what's most important and what you're willing to spend your money on. Another thing I'd like to mention is the toolbox. I mean, a lot of times when you go into a shop, everybody looks for the guy who's got the big snap-on box and obviously that's gotta be the best mechanic. Not always the case, because I worked with some really, really talented mechanics that were running boxes that were really cheap and they made the same amount of money as everybody who had the big thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars snap on or Mac box, your toolbox will not make you money. You want something that's gonna keep your tools secure, the drawers are heavy enough that you're able to use them every day without having problems. Harbor Freight has a lot of toolboxes for the entry level guy and for the money you're gonna spend on them, you're probably in good shape with a box like that until you have a little bit extra money and you wanna go ahead and make the plunge into a big snap on box or Mac box. There you go. Nice finishing touch right there. So if you're first starting as a mechanic, what do you recommend buying? What do I recommend buying? Everything you can. Sell your soul to the devil, take out $30,000 in uh, debt, and buy a decent sized snap-on chest full of snap-on shit. Because why not? <laughs> take the plunge. Yeah, be a man. I mean, not that 30 grand is really going to get you a whole lot, but no. it'll get you a box with a little bit of something. Enough you'll to look, get started. You'll look like you know what you're doing anyway. It'll be good for the first couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs>
So what did the mechanics tell you when you first started? Start buying tools and never stop? No, what are you doing here? Go. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your hair like that? You're a good looking young guy. Go find something that you can make money doing. <laughs> I'm not working on cars. Let's save you right now. <laughs> Actually, I got that speech when I first started too. It's like, yeah. you should probably just turn around and walk out that door yeah. right now. Didn't your parents tell you to go to college? Yeah, it's like, what, what would you get, like a D in everything? <laughs> how did you end up here? <laughs> Do you know how to count money? Yes. I wonder what my monetary investment is here. If you have a half a million dollars, you can buy a bunch of shit like this, I guess. You can get a lift or two, cart full of stuff, snap-on box. I gotta be in for close-up. You got lathes and milling machines. And yeah. I mean, the shop stuff your shop's gonna have, but I mean... Yeah. Your tools is what makes you fast and makes you able to make money quicker yeah, than I mean, other guys. I guess it depends on what kind of job you have too, right? If you're a, if you're a flat rate guy, you want all the tools that you can get, you know, to make you more money. Yeah. If you're hourly. But yeah, you can go a lot of different ways, spend a ton of money. You just want to make sure you're spending money on the right stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, find a different profession. suffer for the rest of your life. <laughs> so when did you start as a mechanic? How old were you? Uh, 16, I guess. So you've been yeah, doing 16. It for what, 20, 30 years? Yeah, 30 years, I'm 46. <laughs> uh, yeah. 40, 30 years, exactly. 30 years of pain and suffering. Would you do it all over again? Yeah, I'd have it no other way. Yeah, I can agree with that. I started about 20 years ago, and yeah. I pretty much, if I want a million dollars, well, I guess a million dollars doesn't go that far anymore. If I want a lot of money and I didn't have to work anymore, I would still do exactly this and put myself through all kinds of pain and suffering and frustration, and it's just part of it. It's a lot of fun. I've often wished I could win the lottery just so I could have a bigger and better shop full of bigger and better tools. I would just have a big shop that I didn't have to do day-to-day -day stuff. And well, just I wouldn't cool do day-to-day -day stuff, but it'd be all fantasy, you know, whatever. Crazy Complete insanity. There'd be a lot of cool stuff going on. Good auction. It'd make a great YouTube channel. Absolutely. So if you want me to uh, give you a good YouTube channel, just give me a winning lottery ticket. That's all you gotta do. So how do you heat your shop? With dinosaurs. <laughs> I have them here in the bucket. I'm hoping Santa brings me more. Well, you probably have a lifetime supply by now. <laughs> yeah. Christmas is always a good time for Westy. You can heat his shop for another 10 years. That's right. Coal, brother. There's no fuel like coal fuel. I love burning dinosaurs. You want to see them on fire? I'll show you. I'll show you some burning dinosaurs. All right, everybody, that was just a little talk about tools. And if you're getting into the trades, just a couple of things that I would recommend doing. So what we're gonna be doing with the mini bike, we're gonna be bringing it into Westies here and we're gonna be doing some custom exhaust and some custom body work and kind of making the bike look more like a real bike rather than just a mini bike. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up very soon. If you guys liked the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Keep that hammer down.